Welcome to Million Dollar Voices with Kuaning Ten, where we spotlight the world's most successful entrepreneurs and business leaders, focusing on empowering women and youth in the realms of tech and sustainability. In each episode, Kuaning engages with different guests, exploring their journey to success, the obstacles they've conquered, and the secrets to building a million dollar business. From tech visionaries to eco-conscious fashion idols, Million Dollar Voices grants you insider access to the thoughts and strategies of the world's most successful business leaders. Kuaning, a co-founder of Fund the Planet, is dedicated to fighting climate change and preserving nature by protecting the rainforest using traceable, transparent, and reliable approaches. Her background in entrepreneurship and sustainability makes her the perfect host to lead listeners through the strategies, insights, and inspirations of some of the most successful business leaders in the world. So, tune in to Million Dollar Voices with Kuaning and get ready to learn from the best. Without further ado, here's your host, Kuaning Ten. David Levinson Unleashed, betrayal, fam, and intellectual property in the startup tech world. We are joined by the brilliant app developer and entrepreneur, David Levinson, alongside our special co-host, Jenny Q. Ta, a Free Times founder and Web3 VC Fund general partner. We will dive into David's entrepreneurial journeys, which have been marked by the intriguing elements of celebrities and betrayal. Together, we will explore legal second opinions, understanding intellectual properties, and valuable lessons learned from navigating the challenging intersections of fam betrayal and the startup tech world. Get ready for the insightful and captivating conversations. Brace yourself for the roller coaster ride of insights, inspirations, and invaluable lessons from his respective journeys. And remember, every stumble, every setback, and every success story. It's a stepping stone on the pathway to your million dollar dream. Without further ado, join me, Kuaning, and your special co-host, Jenny Kuta. Let's dive in. Hey everyone,、um, my name is Jenny Ta.、Uh, we have a special、uh, podcast today.、Uh, first and foremost,、uh, I wanted to thank my very good friend, Kuaning Shen.、Uh, she's dialing in from Taiwan. Her podcast originally. Originally is from Germany.、Uh, we, I am actually the co-host, not the host. Quan Ning, of course, is the host. We're gonna go live on her podcast called Million Dollar Voices, and both of us have a very special guest today,、uh, David、uh, Lib Libers Lib. Okay, I butchered that, David. What is your last name? <laughs> It's pronounced Liebenson. The H is silent. Okay, Liebenson. Okay. Yes. So, yes. quick introduction. Um. Uh, David, uh, I have been reading about you at least the last two to three weeks. You and I have been talking a couple of times now for at least、uh, two to three weeks, also as well. Um, my first question. We're gonna dive right in here. Uh, for you is this way. Um. Could you give us a brief about what had happened to you, to how you've been doing since、um, the case that I read in 2015, I believe. Since that case, what happened to that case, and how long have you been living in the car? So it was, it was, you know, quite a few chain of events that.、Uh... Happened to get to this point, but I've been in, in the car for about four months ish now.、Uh, I I wasn't in a car like ever since it happened with with Kim Kardashian and Kris Jenner, but、um, a few things led to just being in an unfortunate financial situation. After that, obviously, that was a big stressor, and you know, losing everything that I had worked on up to that point before the partnership with them. But、um, I was also、uh, t boned by drunk driver, like right at the worst time when I first moved to Phoenix. So that kind of Gave me an extra little.、Um, it was like a hit and run thing too, so it took me nearly a year to get that sorted out. So that it, between everything all together is kind of what led me to being in the car. Okay. Now, be,、yeah. before Kwaning jumped in with her question, I know she has a lot of questions because you guys haven't talked before. But I wanted to stretch a bit more、uh, with my question, just in case our audience have never heard of you, they've never read about you, so they don't understand what's going on. Could you track back a little bit, really,、yeah. what's going on, 
and touch a little bit on the case which I've read was filed in uh, the district court in the state of Oklahoma in 2019. So if you can mm -hmm. go back a little bit and share with us that story. <clears throat> yeah, so I, I get definitely have gotten pretty good at giving the, the nutshell of the story here. Uh, so uh, my myself, my cousin, and a friend of ours, uh, we co-created an app that um, was uh, it's called Sensorgram. And it automatically removed unwanted comments, spam, and you know, cyberbullying. Um, it was an anti-cyberbullying app slash help you with your business, you know, spamming on your your social media uh, feeds. And uh, so this app, Instagram, was on the App Store. Uh, Kim Kardashian actually used it, and her family and uh, Jonathan Chebin reached out to us through direct messages on Instagram and asked me basically to partner uh, with him and Kim on the app. Um, it was kind of an aggressive approach. So at first, you know, we were, we were a little standoffish and we carried on with our project. Then a couple weeks later, he reached back out to me again. It was like, hey, Kim's app, uh, her her video game, the Hollywood game is doing big numbers, like 200 million. And um, I put the screenshot of our conversation on my website. Um, and so he's like, hey, let's talk. You know, we want to, Kim wants to call you tomorrow. So Kim calls me the next day. We actually just really quickly, uh, we had a, a long conversation, but we, we quickly agreed to to meet up and, and nail down a partnership on Sensorgram. Uh, so we, a couple weeks later, went out to Calabasas. We made our agreement on Sensorgram to do a 60-40 split, 60 us, 40 them. They were going to fund the, the the investment through a, Chris was going to have a family friend fund the investment that she had said. She also sent me an email saying she was going to net contracts for this agreement and for everything we were doing. At the end of this meeting, we also pitched an emoji app that we we named Komoji because we also had other emoji projects that we were working on before we ever met her named Wall Street Emoji and Sexy Emoji. And this was when emojis were just hot. They were, it wasn't like now where they're just everywhere built into every keyboard, you know. So, what year was this? Um, this was 2014. 2000, okay. So, yeah. So we basically pitched this app just as like icing on the cake. Like, all right, we're about to meet up and, and nail this down on this Instagram app, which was the big one. We filed the patent on it. We had a, a provisional patent to where we were going after the, pat the the process for automatically removing comments from social media feeds. That's that's that we were the first ones and we had filed that uh, before we ever even just, you know, talked to Kim. So um, we uh, we pitched Kimoji as just like icing, you know, it's 50 50 chance they're going to take it serious because we were working on a, a serious anti cyberbullying app. We were going to create a foundation. She wanted to use our name and our logo as the for the foundation to help people, you know? So then all of a sudden, once we pitched Kimoji, it turned into, that was the biggest thing to her. You know, she was mm. so stoked on Kimoji. Everything changed from there. Mm. Um, so from there, between, before we even went out to California, apparently my partner, Narayan, had sent a message bragging about our relationship and our, our partnership with Kim mm. to a friend of his saying, hey, you're, you were partnering with your dream girl, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. You know, it wasn't anything malicious, and it was private between him and his friend. Well, their cop, their mutual friend with Jonathan Chebin, they caught wind of this, and they sent a message to Jonathan saying, "Hey, this is what these guys are doing." And Kim kept that in her pocket to basically threaten us, saying, "We breach your privacy. Hand over Kimoji. Hand over her the right to do her own comment control project, even though we had a patent filed on it, or we're going to sue you each for five million dollars." So that's basically how she like that's how that whole thing went down at that time. And she also like she played her like she she you know she's going into acting now, but she actually got her first little taste of it when she made a phone call to us saying she was shocked. And you know, first she's like, Hey guys, you know, everything went great at the meeting, everything's going forward with the two projects. We have funding in place. By the way, did you did you trademark emoji yet? And we're like, No, we didn't trademark it yet because we we're going to wait for our new entity to trademark it together. That's just the right thing to do because it kind of had your name on it. Even though it was our idea that, you know, we were worried about Sensogram. We had that trademark. We had that protected. We had that patented. We were doing our jobs as Americans and responsible business businessmen to do what we needed to do to protect our ideas. Everybody's so obsessed with, obsessed with Kimoji thinking that was the only deal. Like, hey, they're worried about her. They're, they're trying to make money off her image, blah, blah, blah. But that's just like the journalists and everybody reported it that way because that's just – 
like it's it's kind of complicated and nobody really was able to like explain it right and even our own attorneys when they filed a lawsuit they were focusing on Kamoji and not uh sensogram and you know Kamoji being like just that also happened but it wasn't the main main thing understand uh two things real quick how mm -hmm. do you spell sensogram d e n s o r g r a m but we had to actually change it from sensorgram to sensor out because it, back then Instagram sent us a cease and desist saying that we couldn't use the word gram. Gotcha. And we were also, we were developing it. Go ahead. Okay. One more thing before uh, KT jumps in. Uh, what does your cap say? It says cancel the car .com. Wow. Okay. This is linked to my original website, which has my story on, on it, um, and, which is. Kim Kardashian ruined my life.com. Okay, say that again. Uh, Kim Kardashian ruined my life.com. Uh -huh. And this one okay. is canceled the Kardashians.com. I'm just coming up with a few different ways for merch and things. You know, people have asked for their own shirts and hats and things like that. And I'm just coming up with creative ways to keep this movement going and not like asking for donations because I hate that. Like, I want Kim to pay. I never wanted to do this to ask for anything. Gotcha. So, just a creative okay. way to. Understand entrepreneurships is all about ideas and creativity. So two thumbs up to you, KT. You. Mike is yours. Thank you. Yeah. So I also had a chance to read about you, actually. So your story is pretty inspiring, especially for those people who believe in fall down seven times and stand up eight. Right. So I do mm. really admire your strength and also determination. Um, my question you. to you. <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent. And certainly, um, your lawsuit and everything, um, catalyzed the debate on intellectual property rights across the tech mm -hmm. sector. It's a huge, it's huge. So underscoring the urgency to safeguard the intellectual assets and the demand for unambiguous guidelines and rules within the tech industry. My question to you right now is: What have you learned since everything ha happened to you? And what would you? What would you do differently if you had a chance to do it all over again, especially in the area of tech innovation and um, the trademarks? Great question. Um, I, yeah, very great. I, I, I would absolutely uh, have gotten a second opinion on my uh, legal, especially after the threats came in, because uh, you know there there was a lot of holes in it and uh, tech. You know, there's a lot of a lot of ways to maneuver and and um, and then when you add in. Uh, you know, the way people use arbitration these days to where you kind of keep it buttoned up and then you have to really pay to play. And if you can't afford to defend yourself, then, you know, nobody's ever even going to hear about it. So uh, I've learned that um, you have to, you know, really, really, really pay attention and, and uh, always get a second or even maybe a third opinion from your, from your legal team. Totally. I actually have a follow up. Uh, Carefully from trust. From, from KT's great question about the legal aspect of things. It's funny because um, today uh, on Twitter, that's my platform, uh, we're debating about the SEC and cryptocurrency, which David, you and I talk about that. But mm -hmm. um, I did send out a tweet that literally talks about how attorneys, which I've, you know, came across before, who represented me and my companies, and I would be paying them thousands of dollars per hour, and they can still throw me under the bus, okay, and I'm their client. Right. So, you know, I'm so glad, David, to hear that from what had happened to you years ago to now learning that even with legal, it's never safe, and we always need to double check two to three different attorneys at a time. Mm -hmm if it comes to something that it's very valuable or important to us. So I commend you with that. Um, I, uh, I have this next question, but it's going to be two parts. Okay. So the first part I wanted to share is that obviously one, one of the purposes uh, that I've asked you, yes, I asked you uh, to have the interview today is not really delving into what had happened in the past, even though the past brought you to where you are today. But I believe, um, the one of the reasons why I believe is that I believe there's a statue of limitation. I mean, certainly you probably know that 
more than I do. Um, and so I believe I've read a little bit. Of course, I'm not a lawyer. OK, but the statute of limitations for cases like yours is anywhere between one to five years. OK, and if your case began, what, 2015 and then you had the, the, the case file in 2019, uh, that's at least eight, five to eight years. And so I recently ran across your TikTok. And again, most people probably heard about you the last two months is through TikTok. You were actually talking about bringing in the FBI, right? Serious mm-hmm. stuff, David. Now, this is my first question out of the, the two. Can you share in terms of your thoughts in terms of the statute of limitation uh, and, and can is it relevant now to bring in, quote unquote, the FBI? Well, whenever there's, from what I understand, from what my lawyers have told me in the past, whenever there's fraud, it's that kind of changes things when it comes to statute of limitations. Mm. So, it, for example, the reason I was able to file my lawsuit was because we had found more information out after the fact. It was, it was related. It was fraudulently, you know, uh, it, it's just it starts from that time, basically. Mm. So if if say, say 2014 was when it all happened, but then 2000, you know, 15 is when we found out, there, you know, more evidence where it showed, you know, showed there was fraud. Then the statute of limitations starts from that time. Over I again, gotcha. basically. And, uh, without- and as far as the, the yeah, FBI yeah. part, mm. uh, I just don't I, I'm looking into, you know, anytime there's corruption. And, you know, it, it's involving, you know, major, major influential people and institutions and things like that. You know, who else do you turn to? So I all I could do right now is just make noise and apply pressure to every which direction that I possibly can until I until I reach my goal. Understand. And hopefully this interview will help you further uh, to broaden that up. Uh, follow up. I remember in one of our conversations, you shared with me a part about uh, your app that's connected to Instagram. Could you share about that? What that was, was that the sensor- connection? Yeah, that was the Instagram part uh, where okay. we, uh, well, the app itself was is like a filter. You log in your Instagram Instagram credentials and you put in keywords. It's basically the same exact. Uh, word filter that they have, you know, hidden word filter that they have built into the settings on Instagram right now. We actually created an app for that before it was built into Instagram settings. So and the reason why we had filed the patent and everything was because we we knew this was going to be an important tool. And it is. That we, and since we started it, we wanted to have recognition for that. We wanted it to be ours. Right. That's uh, what I, Kim I, was so interested in. That's the uh, very thing Kim wanted. She not only wanted to remove comments from her own social media feed, she wanted, like, she was friends with the CEO of Instagram at the time. He, like, her and Kanye at that time were like trying to fix Instagram. Mm. Like, so it was, it was, and it's, there's, there's, there's media, you know, about this. So it's like, it's not just, you know, there's, there's more to this. And since it goes, it goes into a publicly traded company now, mm. you know, and there was a CEO of the company at the time involved hanging out with her, partying, talking about my proprietary intellectual property. Mm-hmm. You know, that her team, her team filed or her team signed our NDA for our patent file. Wow. So the fact that she discussed our information with the CEO of Instagram after her team signed our NDA to get that file, like, and nobody's able to do anything about it. Like, that's what I, this is what I have to do. I have to get on social media. I have to put up websites. I have to put myself at risk financially. Maybe, you know, I've had death threats to my website. So, I mean, who knows what kind of wow. you know risk I'm actually putting myself at. So they're into, but like, so I don't know what else to do. I can't just give up because they're everywhere. You know, they're unavoidable. So it just comes into my head over and over. Even if I try to think to try to give up, it just comes into my head over and over again. Well, as Kwan Ning was saying earlier, you know, she and I both believe that, uh, you know, guys like you who, uh, you know, fall down seven times and still getting up eight times. That, that's the epitome of entrepreneurship. Uh, before I go into my second part of the question, um, there was also one time you've mentioned about, uh, you know, your app and Instagram. So do you believe a part of what Instagram has today originated from your app? It exactly did. If somebody were to see, if you were to research Instagram and what it does and, you know, what it, what it did, it was on the app store, a working app, we had thousands of users. And then you were to go in and see the functionality of the filter in their settings, 
one would think, hey, these guys, Instagram must have gotten bought out by Instagram because they're using like they, they must be rich now or something, you know. But no, we've never gotten a dollar. And somehow Kim Kardashian is tied in with that. If you take the the emojis part, like the, the the emoji and the emoji and all that stuff out of the equation, one thousand percent, just only focusing on sensogram, that's the scandal. Hmm. That's that's why I'm so upset because a year and a half after the CEO of Instagram tells Kim Kardashian that they're not interested in removing comments the way we remove comments, they have it in their settings. That CEO is no longer in the company. And it's owned by Facebook and it's a publicly traded company. Right. Back up one step, just in case people get lost, David, because I spoke to you a few times. Um, when it comes to you releasing your proprietary app that you and your tim- team at the time put out the time and money to build, then all of mm-hmm. the sudden... You had to release it over. Was that through the advice of your attorney at the time? Mm -hmm. So do you think you were thrown under the bus at the time? I think I was thrown under the bus by multiple times by attorneys. Wow. Because you got to think about it too, you know, and and I know, I know, you know, lawyers are, are, are needed, you know, our, our legal system may be a little messed up, a lot messed up, but you know, we need them and there's a lot of great ones. Um, but, uh, it's still a business, you know, right. and if, if, if there's an opportunity for these guys to make a ton of money on some other projects in the future or get some huge recognition for something down the road and, you know, maybe some celebrity, you know, uh, business or just whatever the case may be. And all they have to do is give their clients some, some advice, you know, that steers them in a different direction and, you know, it was incredibly easy for him to basically tell us, Hey, just go ahead and do this and move on because you guys obviously did something wrong. You know, not saying he intentionally tried to just throw us under the bus, but instead of just looking to see if we actually did something wrong, that would warrant that he's just like, Hey, you really don't have a choice. These guys are big dogs. This is the most powerful threatening attorney on the face of the planet. Martin Singer, you know, he's a the bulldog of attorneys. You know, this guy is threatening to take everything you guys have. And I had something to lose at the time. So I didn't, I never signed this anyways. Like I was confused. The whole, the whole document that allowed her to be able to do, move on and do whatever with emoji. My signature never even made it on this document. There's a whole nother little scandal involving that whole thing in itself. And the whole thing was created under fraudulent circumstances anyways. That's what I'm saying. Like this whole thing is a freaking movie that I've, it's been a bad movie for me that I've never even gotten anything out of. Well, and I'm uh, living in it. I've been in entrepreneurships for 20 years, mentors like dozens of startups. This is the first time I've heard of such, quote unquote, madness. But, you know, um, uh, let me finish the second question. And then Kwan Ning, I'm sure she has plenty more questions for you. Um, But before my question, uh, everyone out there who are listening globally, we hope this podcast, we're going to put it on YouTube as well, both video and audio. Um, that we will get you the connections you needed. Uh, and one of the purposes is definitely with all my heart, I and Kwan Ning too as well, when I share your story with her, we both want you to get off the street, not living in your car. Um, and so th- it's our you know priority to help you with that. But to everyone, all the listeners out there, before I ask my second part question and then Kwan Ning jumps in, which is going to be about cryptocurrency, so you want to make sure to stick around. Uh, I wanted to share information about David uh, because, um, as you know, he's been living in his car. So any and all of your contributions to help him uh, during this time is extremely appreciated. Okay, um, David has uh, Venmo. He has Cash App. He has PayPal where you can help him even five dollars ten dollars whatever it is that your heart when you hear of this story uh that you can help him uh i believe him genuine genuinely uh that's why i'm here uh wanting to bring his story out uh further uh for my own network uh venture capital investors 
uh, other startup founders to hear about this, uh, to learn about the story behind David. Um, you can find uh, all of these addresses by visiting simply his Instagram page. Okay. Uh, David's Instagram page is his first name and last name. His first name obviously is D A V I D. His last name is L I E B as in boy, E N as in Nancy, S as in Sam, O H as in Henry, N as in Nancy. If you follow me or Quan Ning on Twitter or Instagram or even my YouTube, we will definitely connect it over. So, or you could go to Instagram, Google, I mean, search out his name. He has two Instagram pages. One has about 38,000 followers. That's him. Another one is a smaller one, but you will see his link tree. And when you click on his link tree, uh, all of his uh, Venmo, Cash App, and PayPal will be there. Uh, don't be fooled by scammers and send your money to the wrong person when he's the one who need it most. So, uh, but if you need to verify, you can always reach out to me and I will make sure that you will help David directly to one of his accounts. So the second part of my question uh, for you, then uh, uh, Kwan Ning can jump in. So about two weeks ago, uh, David, uh, you and I were talking because uh, on the cryptocurrency world, there's this token called Pepe. Okay, it's uh, Pepe is a meme coin and it literally went viral. I mean, it came out from nowhere and it, you know, ran up to like 000.42. Some people only put in a couple hundred bucks and they woke up the next morning. They were instant millionaires. So you and I talk about that because, you know, we talked about plans that built you back up to get you off the street. Um, getting you back into entrepreneurship because that's where you started out from. You you are a man with a great mind, uh, probably had bad attorneys, in my opinion. Uh, and so I'm trying to help you back to where you left off and restart again, giving it's been eight to nine years. Uh, but then all of a sudden, this SEC situation uh, is hitting the crypto space like as if, Everyone were shocked, okay? We're still talking about it today. So out of my gracious heart, because everybody knows me, I never want to send anyone to the wrong path. And definitely the last thing you need is someone to send you to the wrong path again, okay? <laughs> so I did give you advice. Let's hold that off, okay? Let's not pursue that right now. Because I don't want you to get in any more troubles than what happened already to you. Uh, we did briefly touch on NFTs, which I believe is still okay to do, okay? Because NFTs is purely art, okay? But you still got to do it right somehow. Um, that's my question, David, to you is, have you heard about NFTs? And what are your thoughts about it? Um, you know... I've definitely heard about them and I understand the concept, but I just, um, I'm, you know, it's new. It's, it's still new to me. You know, I, I have, I still have a lot to learn. Okay. So to the crypto community, especially the NFT community, if you hear this story right about now, and if you have any ideas that you can join force with David, again, this is his brand. Please. Okay. So he's the boss here, not you guys. And he knows that he's going to have me and Quan Ning to be his personal advisor. So if anybody's going to go out, try to scam him, you better make sure that you're going to go through me this time around. Okay. <laughs> so do reach Thank out to him, share with him your ideas. And if he thinks it's good, obviously he may or may not check with me as I would just going to mentor him. And if I find it good, uh, I will help him make sure to get the legal counsel that he needs to make sure he is well protected. So if anybody out there trying to scam him, again, you, you gotta go through me, okay? And Kwan Ning. So do reach out to him and um, that's where you start. Kwan Ning, my apologies, I took over the mic, but uh, back to you. No, like, thank you for great questions. I think th those are super important, for sure. Relevant as well. 
until today. And David, so with some ideas you have to share with us and everybody, if one of our listeners out there have a magical one, and I, I, I can promise you maybe majority of them have it, um, what is the most important things would you like the assistance right now, such as maybe money, business partnership, or any kind of support? Um. You know, at this point, you know, I, I really don't like asking for things. You know, it really took a lot for me to even put the donation links up. But uh, if people want to help me, you know, get more attention on the website, it allows me to, you know, um, small donations allow me to put more signs up, banners, you know, maybe billboards. Uh, it just kind of gives me more of a platform. And you know. Uh-oh. I think David, you you're, you're mute. D David? David, stop. David? And not like a, hey. I'll okay, he's soon. back, he's back. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. We lost you for the last maybe one minute. If you can go back and say, we lost you where you say help you with the signs. Let's start oh, from there. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, any small donation, any size donation allows me to put up more signs, maybe, you know, billboards. A lot of things people are suggesting but i don't have the budget for and, and um you know really i want this to be more of like a comeback story because i'm very capable of coming back stronger than you know where i was when you know i had sensogram but um i just need to get back to that position and that's also why i'm sleeping in my car so i can save money and put myself back in that position but any donation obviously helps me accelerate that and um and if you can't donate just sharing my story telling your friends, you know, sharing my posts on TikTok and Instagram, stuff like that and Twitter, you know, that's, that's incredibly, uh, incredibly helpful. And, and honestly, opportunities, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm a workaholic. So if, if somebody has an opportunity that I can use, you know, maybe some of my influence or my story or my, my experiences and, uh, and background to help them and, you know, some new partnership or something, I'm just being extremely careful with, with what I do moving on. That's the only thing. Okay, very well. Is it too personal, David? And if it is, please don't answer. Uh, is it too personal to ask what are you doing these days to meet ends meet? You know, building your savings no. back up. Okay, I'm fully transparent. I want to, I want the world to know what I'm doing. That's why I'm doing this. But I'll I'll document all of it. Uh, so right now, the only thing that really gives me flexibility to do all of this and and, and kind of make my own way um, is doing Amazon Flex and like DoorDash and Grubhub. So I, I basically do them all, and I, I run all the, all the, uh, you know, the uh, high traffic times, and and then I try to do as much of this in between interviews and whatnot, and then because of because of some of the recognition that I've gotten through some of the businesses that I've had even prior to the Kardashian thing, um, it's given me opportunities to do like you know small like marketing projects for people. Sometimes somebody will reach out and ask me to help them with something, and so you know, I can make money doing stuff like that. But. Definitely need to get out of this cycle. It's just tough when I'm trying to make my own way and I don't really want to ask people for stuff. So that's just where I'm at right now, you know? Well, that's why we're here today. And here I am asking for stuff. <laughs> well, actually, no. Yes and no. I mean, you're you're actually a very humble man and uh, people who do know me. Uh, I'm also quite picky when it comes to, um, you know, using my brand, who I am, and not only that, dragging my friends. Uh, to interview someone, right? And so I we've talked for a, a good old two to three weeks. I kind of fit all the puzzles where I needed to do, which in the world of entrepreneurships is called due diligence. And it was more than sufficient for me to um, see you as a man, uh, not only with character, uh, but a very smart man. And that leads me to the next question. Um, so let's dive a little bit deeper about some of the projects in case there are listeners out there who may want to partner up with you. Okay. Because again, you started out years ago before you got into this dilemma, dilemma as an entrepreneur. And um, I would say for any entrepreneur, for them to have the opportunity that you had to literally, you and your team, walk into the other world's home to sit at the round table 
and discuss a deal. Okay? I mean, they're one of the biggest families, I guess I can say, in Hollywood. And now they're, what, you know, some of their family members are billionaires, right? So the Hollywood mafia. Right. I, I get you. I get that. So that that was not many entrepreneur founders or startups can do that. So I commend commend you uh, with that. So my question is, Thank you. with your last invention, that app, okay, that, um, you know, block spammers, haters uh, that you mentioned, where your legal advisors at a time, at that time, uh, advise you to sign it over, right? Um, and we talk about that a little bit earlier. That invention to me uh, was truly ahead of its time because, again, I'm 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 a three X founder. I built applications, I built platforms, so I do know exactly uh, where you and your team went when when building that. So my question is. Do you have any project ideas now that you may need help to get funding uh, to get yourself back up uh, of that stage where you built things, you know, as an entrepreneur? I do, actually. Um, I had a couple things that I had on the back burner from when I was able to fund on my own. But this going viral on this on this story and having so many people reach out, you know, a couple of people wanting to do documentaries and stuff, kind of giving me a new, uh, a new idea that, you know, is related to this. And it's also fits in kind of with some, you know, the original app idea. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that one. I don't want to give out too much information right now, but well, you know I'm what? definitely excited about it. You're definitely learning because like me, right, KT, everything these days, NDAs before you share it to the masses, and if mm -hmm. you need an updated NDA, I can certainly <laughs> send you mine. Uh, you. Mine is one of the tightest NDAs ever. It's been reviewed by several different attorneys. I don't mind sending you the template for that, uh, but I can make you with that. Now, here's a side trick before KT jump in again with her next question. Um, hypothetically, hypothetically, David, if someone would have come to you and said, well, you know, we can get the other folks who kind of, let's just say, mess you up years ago, come back and say, well, you know, let's, uh, let's be friends again. Okay, we want to make this all work again. We wanted to fund your project. Once again, partners 50-50. Would you or would you not? You know... <laughs> Interesting Tough question. question, Interesting huh? question. Uh -huh. It's the world uh, of entrepreneurship, baby. That things you know, happen though, right? You know, I'm not I'm I'm not somebody that uh that can't get past something, you know. Biz, you know, somebody might think contrary to that because I'm keeping this going for many years, but this just happened to be things came out more, you know, so it's just hard to let go. But um so, you know, I think that uh um I think that, um, sorry, could you repeat the last, uh, last question? What, if someone were to hear our pro KT and my interview of you today, come approach you and said, look, we know the other side, we have a proposal, oh, let's come okay, back yeah. together and what your answer would be. Um, I, I couldn't say no because if there was an apology and a re like a resolution, that was my whole goal to begin with. That's what got me sidetracked because I wanted to say that my first goal here was for a resolution and was for like, I didn't want to do all this. So it just got to this point. So if people think that I just like am just anti Kardashian to the bone, but that's not, that never really was the case. It was just, I wanted to make this right. And it just has to be, this is what I do until I get the resolution that I need. And if not, if I end up creating this huge platform that takes them down a peg or two because of what happened, then that's just going to be the case. So I'm, I'm trying to force an apology and for me to be able to go to the people and say, hey, everybody that's been supporting me so wonderfully, they've came to me and worked this out. 
you know, I'm cool with them now, basically. Let's move on. So well, that's, you... I mean, that's something that I would like. So listeners to our audience out there, when this goes out live, as you can see why I totally respect this man after talking to him about two to three weeks, because um, those who are in America, if you remember the um, the 20, uh, the, the, the President Obama election, right? When he went head to head with then Senator Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton lost against President Obama at the time. So what did happen when President Obama became president? He literally took his hand and invited Hillary Clinton to become his secretary of state. And since then, they became very close friends, if not best of friends. I mean, I'm sure President Obama trusts Hillary Clinton and vice versa. So I'm the type and I believe KT and I are very good friends, so you can't be friends unless you kind of think the same. Um, we are that way. And that was actually a tricky question. Well, kind of tricky. That's why you saw David kind of took it by surprise. Is I wanted the world to see how he responds to that. Is he, does he have a vendetta against, you know, the other family? Or, or does he have motives or whatever? But this man is such <clears throat> pure heart that he he acts like Obama. OK, now we're not talking about politics here. I'm just using Obama and Hillary as as an example, because that's mostly recent happened. And if, if that could ever happen, you know, that is also uh, the pride and joy between Kwan Ning and I uh, through this broadcast that we can bring uh, the two together, because certainly uh, David is a great man, super uh, um, intelligent man, and he needs help because um, he had, to me, he, he had, uh, you know, horrible advice uh, from his legal team years ago. Uh, KT, back to you. Yeah, oh, thank you, Jenny. That was really good question, I have to say, and a good answer from you, David, as well. So um, given the time and the length of the podcast, I have a final question for you. And so I did some of the research on you as well, since Jenny, you know, brought up a story and I said, hey, we have been talking. And I saw you did a crowdfunding campaign through Indiegogo, right? And it raised about 3,200 bucks, if I'm, I'm right. Um, are you planning to go, um, are you planning to use this platform, like global kind of their community globally to seek for support or um, what's the purpose behind that? And then what's your idea? So that was kind of, uh, I had somebody reached out to me in the very beginning when I first went viral and uh, suggested a couple things trying to help me. And they suggested that I start the Indiegogo. So now that that's actually ended, people are going to be all refunded since it didn't reach its, its uh, so that really hasn't benefited me at all. It's kind of like more of like a kind of like a waste and like a, and a, it just like distracted people from, you know, so I, I should have waited and just did some kind of a campaign when I was ready and I had an actual idea or product that I was going to create to do that, you know, uh, so can't win them all, you know, but um, uh, if I do another crowdfunding campaign, uh, it's going to be something that's going to be more calculated and, you know, with uh, with a better launch. Wait, wait, David. Did you say you have to return all the money? So I uh, I got an email saying that they're yeah refunding. This. So if you it, it, even though it raised you know a fraction of what the amount we put on there uh, that that team at the time had suggested I put on there, which is ridiculous. But so that even you know it, since even though it still reached a couple thousand bucks, like I still don't even get that. That's going back to people. So anybody that sees this that had that, if you do want to con you know contribute still, you could do it through one of the other ways on my website or the link tree. Uh, yeah, but oh, it's kind of a weird, kind okay, of a weird thing. So let me further ask this. I I asked yeah. thorough question because I know mm -hmm. people is going to ask. So based upon Quan Ning's question, Indiegogo went up to thirty two hundred. Did you ever mm -hmm. touch a penny of that money, or is sat at Indiegogo? Still in Indiegogo, and I'm never going to get a dollar from it. Okay. So those who contribute... Same thing with the change.org. Change.org received thousands in contributions, but that money stays in change.org for the internal promotion of the... of the. It basically, it stays in change.org. They kept it. So, mm. so far, the, you know, five, six thousand dollars that's been raised 
through Change and Indiegogo, none of it went to me. Okay. So that that's what I wanted to make sure the people out there heard that is if you ever want to ask for your money back from either David's Indiegogo campaign or the other campaigns, he did not touch a penny. So you should go back to Indiegogo, send them an email or other campaigns and say, hey, I want my money back because obviously they kept the money and David never received a penny of that. So don't listen and, to this podcast yeah. and start shooting him emails or me <laughs> or Con Ding say, hey, where's my money? I want my money back. Yeah. First of all, and, don't and do again, that. Uh -huh. I'm perfectly capable of working. You know, I've worked seven days a week as long as I need to to rebuild. I have no problem with that. I, I enjoy working. I would rather do something that really gets me much further down the road, you know, but I have no problem doing that. It's, it, you know, the purpose of these donations, it just helps me get more attention to the website. Every cent goes into blowing up the story and the website and letting me do more podcasts and stuff like that. Gotcha. So again, I want to be clear. Yes, very clear now to those folks who did make the contribution on for David through Indiegogo or other platforms. You've heard it from here that he've never gotten a, a, a penny. So maybe you should request your money back, then cash app him. Okay, <laughs> you know, cash app him on this side, send him to pay. I think they're sending the money back. From what I read, the email from the I'm probably going to do a video on my TikTok for this just to help people out. But yeah. so I think all these people are getting emails from from uh indiegogo and they're going to get their uh they're going to get a charge back to their card or whatever Great. they made the contribution on so i think they're automatically going to get reimbursed their money since the campaign didn't make it to its goal so everybody everybody should be okay hopefully nobody loses any money but if they do definitely was not my intention and i'll do what i can to fix gotcha. it for you if i can and to those folks out there since you've already made that contribution and once when you get that credit back you can send it directly to David now through Venmo, uh, Cash App, or PayPal. I will read that information again at the end of this broadcast, and uh, we will have the wordings up uh, for you too once when we we go live. Uh, David, um, can't believe an hour has just like pew, go past just like that, but you've shared so much great information, David. Uh, I do have um, a last question for you. Um, so I know your continuous fight is just getting started, okay? I know you, even though I've only talked for three weeks. You're a strong man. Um, so even though it's been eight to nine years, and I'm hoping through this interview you will get the funding, the partnerships needed to not only get you off the street from living in or sleeping in your car, to hopefully get an apartment, a studio of some sort. Uh, at least that's that's a start. Um, so my final thoughts are, David, if you were to magically have a million dollars when you wake up tomorrow, would you, A, go back and sue the people who cost you damages or heartache let's just use that the past couple years i think you went through a divorce living in your car or two use that money utilize that money and build your future what would that be so i would definitely you know it would be it would be a balance you know i would have wow. to follow through i would have to follow through with a few potential options to remedy the situation with Instagram and, and the trademark for Kimoji and all that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't throw it all in it. Like, you know, I wouldn't, it, it would, like I said, it would be, a, it would be a balance. It would be, you know, 80% rebuild because I can make a hundred times what I would have made on that if I focus and 20%, you know, I have some loose ends and see if I can't, because I, they, I've, I've had an offer. You know, I've had a written offer from them. And uh, if I don't, if I don't pursue that, at least to get a real offer, a real resolution and move on, then I will kick myself. You know, even if I had the money to move on and make another fortune, I, I still I'd have to balance it out. But I definitely would not risk it all. You know, wait, backtrack one second here. 
Did you、mm-hmm. say you had a written offer from them? Oh yeah, like I, recently. I was, I was offered.、Uh, no, this was in two thousand and twenty, two thousand twenty. This was after the. No, this was actually right before the lawsuit, and because、mm-hmm. it was such a backhanded offer, even though it was six figures and it was a percentage of Komoji, it wasn't anything in the past. And they were changing the name of how they were doing business to where we weren't going to get any future sales. So our lawyers said, "No, no, 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 that's negotiating in bad faith. That's backhanded, and we're going to sue." So that's what they did instead. Instead of going back to the table, and it's it was just a mess. But yeah, so there was an offer, and so they, you know, they were just, you know, a couple digits away from having me not doing what I'm doing now. Okay. Another follow up question. I, I'm 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 just curious. This is just a wild <laughs> story. Were those the same set of attorneys who represented you to sign over your proprietary?、Mm-hmm. No, a different no, set the, of attorneys. Oh yeah, the original the original attorney was a guy that I had a business with my ex's brother, and we had closed out our business, and he was our contractual like business attorney that helped us with all that.、And、so he was like my guy for business stuff, and so he he couldn't be at our meeting. But he was a part of everything. He had like a decathlon or something. But、um, he he was very much a part of everything at the time. He was a good guy. He just wasn't cut out for going up against these bulldog entertainment lawyers. But then the new people, the new lawyer, and that new team, they reached out wanting to do it on contingency because it was Kardashian involved.、Mm-hmm. I didn't search out this attorney. He came to me. He was one of those you know celebrity chasing attorneys. He put he put his this case with me. And my partner's on his website, on his in his bio, and didn't even do anything for us. Caused more problems than if anything. That's the kind of guy he is. Wow, I I thought I met bad attorneys so, in my life. Yes, you you beat me to that, David. You definitely. I'm a trusting guy.、That. That's one thing I, I,、right. I, I you know one of my faults is I'm trusting. You know, I, it doesn't hurt for me to have people in my on my team that aren't so trusting. That's something I'll definitely be one of the first to admit for sure. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, um. I guess I can understand why when I asked you that last question. I mean, if I was in your shoes,、uh, if God sent me a million bucks, I'd probably say, "Ah, forgot the past. Let's just, you know, keep going with the future." But I get why you wanted to do a twenty eighty.、Uh, I get that. So,、um, you know,、uh, yeah. Thank you so much for that question. So I guess,、uh, folks, that's a wrap,、uh, everyone. Uh, thank you again.、Uh, thank you, David. Thank you, Quan Ning, for allowing me to be your co-host today. Even though I talk kind of a lot, so <laughs> you have done an awesome job. Like all the questions, and David, you nailed it as well. Thank you so much. Yeah. So、um, again, I would like to、uh, reread all of cr-、uh, David's credential. So please take out a pen and a paper. And you can search for him. I, he's all over Google anyway. But、uh, you see on the screen if you have video, his name is uh, David uh, Liebenson,、uh, and you can cash app him, Venmo, PayPal,、uh, even five to ten dollars. It would help him a lot, as you've heard his story already.、Um, for me, I find it most easiest is to go on Instagram, search out his name. You will see he has two accounts. Find the one that has thirty-eight thousand followers, or you can go to Quan Ning's page or my page, and you can see the account that I'm following or Quan Ning's following, which is David. You know that's the right one. Please don't, you know, fall for scammers sending money to the wrong David,、uh, which is the last thing we wanted to do. And、uh, so, but you can also send him an email. David, is it okay that I give out your email? I think it's Please, and it's also in my uh huh. It's in my bio and on my website too. Is the email? Gotcha. D. D. Levinson at iCloud. Gotcha. So his email, as you can see, is the first letter of his first name. So is D as in David, but don't spell out David. Just the letter D, and then his last name is Levinson. L i e b e n s o h n at iCloud dot com. So. Uh, again, those who are following me and Quan Ning on Instagram or Twitter, we will connect you to all of his pages as well.、Uh, thank you so much, David and Quan Ning.、Uh, do each of you guys have any last thing to say before we wrap this up?、Mm, no, I'll just sorry. 
Kwani, go yeah, ahead. I, say, I will put all the links down below as well, either on podcast or um, the YouTube and also the post, any post. I will just also put all the links down below and then do like support this kind of story and then please retweet, repost because as long as we get the story out, um, I think David will like receive more help that he needs as well to rebuild his own life. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I, I just want to thank you ladies so much for having me on and being so supportive. It just means so much that, you know, makes me feel like I'm definitely not alone with everybody supporting me like they are. Okay. Where you don't have to say specifically where you're at, David, because I'm, you know, wanted to be caution of your privacy and safety. Uh, are you in Northern California? W which city and state kind of? I'm actually, kinda? I'm actually in the, the Phoenix Phoenix metro area, the valley. Oh, Phoenix of, uh, area. Phoenix, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I go. I go into LA. Uh, I'm gonna have to go to LA to do a TV interview soon. Um, but okay. then, uh, and I and I do a couple things over there. Occasionally, it's only a six-hour drive or an gotcha. hour flight. Well, you know, you can reach me when you're out here. Uh, definitely, lunch or dinner is on me. Uh, Quanding knows I rarely invite that invitation unless I'm <laughs> super comfortable with someone and I respect them, but. Uh, my time is very valuable, so is her time. And, um, you know, thank you so much again, uh, both of you. And on behalf um, of Quanning's podcast, um, hold on a second here. Sorry about that. So, um, again, uh, we will drop this on Twitter, uh, Instagram. I don't have TikTok, uh, YouTube. Uh, all of our friends going to um, uh, 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 forward it or share it. Uh, but on behalf of Million Dollar Voices, which is Quanning's podcast uh, from Germany, uh, thank you, everyone, uh, who's been listening to our uh, interview today. Thank you, Quanning, and thank you, David. Until next time. Thank you. Uh, thank you. The interview is conducted by the interviewers and is based on information provided by the interviewee. Listener discretion is advised. The content should not be considered factual, and before drawing any conclusions, further due diligence is recommended. The opinions expressed are those of the interviewee and do not necessarily reflect the views of the interviewers or this platform. Using the information responsibly and conduct independent research before forming any conclusions. The interviewers and affiliated parties are not liable for any consequences resorting from reliance on those interviews. So just like that, we are at the end of another insightful episode of New and Other Voices. Today, we have had the privilege of sharing powerful stories and unique strategies from some of the world's most successful entrepreneurs and business leaders. My hope is that you will have not just listened, but also feel inspired to take bold actions in your own life. Whether it's in tax, sustainability, or wherever your passions may lie, it's our mission to empower women and youth around the globe. So take these lessons, make them your own, and embark on your journey towards success. As your host and co-founder of Fund Planet, I want to share my gratitude for you joining me today. Together, we are learning about the incredible impact we can make when we approach business with a heart from society. So until we meet again in the next episode, keep dreaming, keep innovating, and remember your voice could be next million dollar voices that spark again in the world. Don't forget to subscribe to ensure you won't miss out the future conversations. And it is Kwaning signing out from Million Dollar Voices. Stay tuned and stay inspired. Until next time. Bye, everyone.